after Brahma created Manu, Swayambhuva Manu, Brahma son, and his wife Shatarupa, he created them to increase the progeny, populate the universe, and exactly as per the desire of Brahma, his son Manu is surrendering to the father and he is asking for instructions. So Brahma is telling, my dear son, I am very pleased with you. Preetas tubhyam aham. <clears throat> and I, Brahma is also offering his blessings for both Manu and his wife. Swayambhava Manu and Shatarupa. Why is Brahma pleased with Manu, because Manu has surrendered himself without reservation. Nirvyali kena. And the purpose of the surrender is to receive instructions for carrying out his duty his assigned duty. We can see similarly in the Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna is surrendering to Krishna. Shishyasteham shadhimam tvam prapannam Shadi means the same word that is used here. Instruct me. Tvam prapannam I have surrendered to you as a shishya, as a disciple. Here, uh, Manu is surrendering as a son to the father. Atmana arpitam. He is uh, surrendering his self. Atmana arpitam. This surrender is very significant in spiritual life. Uh, Krishna also tells Arjuna, Sarva dharman parityajya mami kam sharanam raja. Surrender to me alone. So why this surrender is required? Or why this surrender is uh, instructed? That is because, as Prabhupada explains in the purport, the father or the guru is very much affectionately inclined towards the son or the disciple. And the father wants to actually uh, Instruct and guide the son by all means. For what purpose? So that the son will make progress in life. So what is uh, implicit in this understanding is that we are born into ignorance. We are born into ignorance. So we require to be enlightened by superior authority. That is required. And if we have to receive enlightenment, our attitude should be one of surrender without reservation. Without reservation, what does it mean? It means that there is no other motive 
ulterior motive, some hidden agenda. There is no such thing. This is also called arjavam, a Brahmanical quality. Simplicity, no duplicity. That means when Manu tells, the son is telling the father, I surrender to you, kindly instruct me. He actually has no other intention other than actually receive instructions and follow. Not some conditions that he is putting. Unconditionally he is surrendering and he is ready to receive instructions. So such surrender requires faith. This is not the kind of uh, blind faith that uh, sometimes surrender is misunderstood. When Krishna says surrender or when Arjuna says I surrender to Krishna, then people think that, oh, this person is very weak or he is foolish or he is not having uh, courage or confidence or he is not uh, having ability. Surrender is seen as weakness. Surrender is understood as uh, being done out of fear. Of course, Arjuna's condition on the battlefield was that he was overwhelmed with compassion for his kinsmen and he was uh, fearing severe sinful reactions, etc. But Arjuna's surrender is not exactly because of any fear of him losing the battle. Particularly in the first chapter, Prabhupada points out, Arjuna is feeling compassion out of his good nature, soft-hearted nature, because he is a pure devotee of Krishna. Yasyasti bhakti bhagavati akinchana sarvair gunais tatra samasate suraha. A pure devotee of Krishna has all the good qualities to be found in the demigods. Divine nature. All good qualities of divine nature. So such a devotee is not surrendering because of weakness, surrendering because of his... Uh, because he is fearful, in life, no. So surrender should not be misunderstood. Besides that, even if one is very learned, the practical wisdom to apply that knowledge has to be received from the proper superior authority. What Krishna tells Arjuna, you surrender to me alone, that's not only for Arjuna, it's for every living being in this creation. For everyone. Because that is the only way we can get practical guidance how to come out of this Entanglement, how to come out of ignorance, how to come out of the material suffering. There is no other way. We require Krishna's perfect guidance. We require that. Whatever be our position in this world. So, such training to surrender to Krishna 
in the Vedic culture is given when in the beginning itself the child is taught to follow, obey in a disciplined way the parents. In the 17th chapter, Austerities of the Body, Krishna describes Deva Dvija, austerity of the body. Deva Dvija Guru Pragna Poojanam. Which is the verse? 17 point. Fourteen, seventeen point fourteen. Read that verse, Shona Mangala. Ah, seventeen point fourteen. Which chapter are you opening? Shaucham Arjavam Shariram Tapauchate Shariram Tapauchate Shariram Shariram Tapauchate So, Deva Dvija Guru Pragna Poojanam Worship of respectable superiors Beginning with the Supreme Lord, Deva, Dvija, the Brahmanas, qualified Brahmanas, uh, Guru, the spiritual master, and Pragya means, Prabhupada says, respectable superior like father and mother. So that's where it begins, this discipline or training uh, in surrender. And that is required for the proper uh, development of a individual. Without such surrender, it is not possible to properly uh, get trained up in uh, spiritual life. Then after this initial surrender is taught and little training has been given at home, then surrender to the spiritual master. Uh, the old system is Gurukul system. But whether there is Gurukul system or no Gurukul system, anybody wants spiritual uh, perfection, they have to seek out Search out for a guru and surrender to the guru without reservation. So the training is given in the beginning by the parents. So here we see the relationship between the father and the son, Brahma and his son Manu, is excellent. Prabhupada says, that uh, both the father and the son are well qualified and their example should be followed by all humankind. Hmm? Where is that? The father and son relationship as exhibited here in the dealings of Brahma and Manu is excellent. Generally, the father is naturally disposed with goodwill towards the son. But sometimes, the son becomes misguided because of misuse of his small independence. The independence is always there. Living being means independence has to be there. So that independence can be misused. So when there is misuse of independence, then the son or the disciple becomes misguided. Sometimes we have seen example of uh, Prabhupada's disciples, they misunderstand 
Prabhupada's instructions and they leave and go away. There was one disciple of Prabhupada uh, who when he heard from Prabhupada that that was the time when America was sending uh, people to the moon. So the first time I think in America they announced that a man has landed on the moon and that person is from America. So Prabhupada said it's not possible to go in this body to the moon. So this one disciple, what is his name? Somebody knows? I forget his name. He became very disturbed. He had so much faith in the technology and science and the advancement of the American uh, scientists or technologists. And they were showing it on TV. They were showing photographs. So how can we not believe that they have gone to the moon? How is Prabhupada telling? They have not gone to the moon. Not possible to go. They are actually showing on the TV. In English they say, seeing is believing. So when they are showing on the TV, you have to accept. You have to believe. So, Prabhupada was telling from the perspective of the Shastra. Shastra can never be wrong. Shastra is perfect. Shastra is without defects of the conditioned soul. So we cannot always go by what we perceive with our limited senses. So Prabhupada says and elsewhere, another place that one may not accept the statements of the spiritual master sometimes, but the Shastras cannot be wrong. The Shastras are perfect. So the spiritual master always speaks in line with the Shastra. So these are Pramanas, Guru Sadhu Shastra. Not only the spiritual master, his predecessors, the previous Acharyas who are called Sadhu as a Pramana, they also are presenting everything based on Shastra. So, the uh, perfect knowledge is given by the all-perfect Supreme Personality of Godhead in the form of the Vedic literature. Perfect knowledge. So, in, that, uh, in the Vedic literature it is said, for a human being on the earth, he cannot go to the heavenly planets, moon being one of the heavenly planets, we cannot go to the moon in this body, So even the yogis who practice Ashtanga Yoga and get the Siddhi to travel to other planets, they are able to do that in their subtle body. If a yogi, he wants to travel, they say astral travel. It's actually a subtle body, traveling in a subtle body. Not the gross body. The gross body has so many limitations. Uh, and uh, with those limitations, uh, any person with little common sense can understand uh, that uh, such a gross body has uh, so many disqualifications. So many disqualifications. Especially when it comes to traveling in outer space. So, uh, 
the training in surrender begins in the very culture uh, at home itself when the child is just growing up uh, surrender to the parents obey the instructions of the parents without any duplicity and the faith to follow is because the parents the teacher the guru all are well wishers they are all well wishers that is the basis of the faith now krishna says in the bhagavad gita he is the best well wisher of all living entities therefore when krishna says surrender to me that time we have to surrender without any reservation because krishna is a well wisher he is telling for our own ultimate good similarly the representative of krishna the bona fide spiritual master the pure devotee is also well wisher of all the suffering souls so he preaches to the suffering souls to surrender to krishna and surrender to krishna is not possible without surrender to the spiritual master because one cannot easily approach krishna like that krishna is a supreme pure the supreme personality is completely transcendental to this material creation so how can one even approach krishna a conditioned soul how can he even approach krishna even when krishna incarnated and he was present on the planet people could not recognize him the conditioned souls always make a mistake of thinking krishna is ordinary person when he appears in his original form human like form they think he is ordinary person so that will not inspire surrender to krishna hmm? therefore uh, surrender to krishna is possible if one learns how to surrender by surrendering first of all to the spiritual master now surrender to spiritual master is possible because the spiritual master comes in a form in which we can actually relate or connect krishna does not accept a material body but the guru the spiritual master he comes in a form in which we can actually see him connect with him relate with him just like prabhupada is a pure devotee he doesn't have to take birth in this material world in a uh, material body he doesn't have to come but he does that for our sake but because he utilizes his material body exclusively entirely for devotional service it's no longer material it becomes spiritualized and such a spiritualized form is always worshipable in all conditions in all conditions it is worshipable iha yasya harer dasye karmana manasa gira nikhila swapi avasthasu jeevan mukta sauchate he is liberated under all conditions because of his engaging his body his words and his mind entirely in devotional service to krishna it is like iron in hot in uh, contact with fire becomes red hot iron will act like fire iron doesn't become fire iron is iron fire is fire but iron acts like fire so that's why 
people have difficulty in understanding if you say Prabhupada's form is spiritual, why is it Prabhupada sometimes becomes sick, ill? Why are there symptoms of old age? Spiritual form, no old age, no disease. Hmm? So we should understand that the characteristics of the material body as regards the material nature will remain the same. Hmm? But the spiritual quality is in terms of that spiritual body completely being utilized for devotional service. What are the proof that is entirely used for devotional service? Even when Prabhupada is sick, he is Krishna conscious. Even when he is sick, he is Krishna conscious. Uh, one devotee, he is writing in a biography that sometimes when Prabhupada would become sick, they would not know because he would not tell them. And they come to know only when, during lunch time, he will say, today I will not take lunch. Oh, Prabhupada is not taking lunch means he is sick. But till lunch time, whatever is normal activities, everything is normal, everything is going on. There is no alteration. So, that way, uh, the pure devotee, for our sake, he accepts a material body, but that material body should not be treated like material body because it is uh, completely utilized for devotional service to Krishna. Therefore, it is spiritualized. And then such a form, we use the word form, not the body. Such a form, huh? we touch, then we become spiritualized. Our consciousness gets spiritualized. What to speak of touching, even just seeing the form, even just seeing the form, you become spiritualized. You advance in devotional service. You get immense amount of spiritual benefit just by seeing. Narutam Das Thakur says that uh, darshana pavitra karo e tumara gun. A pure devotee, when he gives darshan, when people see him, all the sins are completely washed away. All the sins are washed away just by seeing him. So that body is not ordinary body. That form is not ordinary form. It is not even like the form of the yogi which by yoga practice has become you know, uh, a Siddha Deha, a perfect form with so many material perfections. It is not like that. Prabhupada doesn't have to practice yoga. All the mystic powers of a yogi a pure devotee automatically has got them. All the mystic powers. So that transcendental form has to be worshipped. Just like Krishna is completely spiritual, we worship Krishna's transcendental form. Exactly like that we have to worship Prabhupada's spiritual form. 
So this is difficult to understand for the non-devotees. Uh, unless one uh, practices devotional service, one cannot even begin to understand. Uh, they say, why do you worship a uh, human being? Sometimes people come to our temple and see the way we worship Prabhupada. Why do you worship human being? They say, I, we understand you have to worship God. But why do you worship human being? So the reason is that pure devotee engages his body, mind and words entirely in Krishna's service all the time, in all circumstances. Never he utilizes it for sense gratification. So that's the reason his worship. So the enlightenment, perfect instructions are received and one becomes enlightened by surrender. Without reservation. Nirvyali kena. This word nirvyali kena is used in different ways in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, Krishna says, Maam chayo avyabicharena bhakti yogena sevate. Avyabicharini bhakti. Without reservation, without any uh, duplicity. Hmm? without any hesitation. So many ways we can describe uh, this uh, surrender. What is the quality of surrender? Hmm. Unlike those who surrender to the demigods, prapadyante anya devata. Somebody who surrenders to the devatas because they are driven by lusty desires for material enjoyment and they expect the devatas to favor them with some material benefit, that is not uh, the proper surrender. That is not proper surrender. That you cannot call nirvyali kena atma arpitam. No. That is full of material motivation. So such surrender is all temporary, conditional. It is... Uh, full of calculations. So many calculations. If I worship Ganesha, then I will get this benefit. If I worship Shiva, then I'll get some other benefit. Uh, so that sort of a surrender is not surrender actually. Surrender means without reservation. And with the full confidence that the person to whom I am surrendering, my object of surrender is my topmost well-wisher, is my well-wisher. So I have no demand, I have no demand. In fact here Manu is asking his father Brahma, please instruct me, this is not a demand, this is simply to carry out the order of Brahma. To carry out. Just like Arjuna says, Karishye vachanam tava. I'll carry out your instruction. So, uh, that is the uh, proper surrender. To carry out the instructions. To follow the instructions. So, it is possible if we surrender without reservation, uh, and such surrender is uh, actually uh, possible when we have the faith that the object of surrender is my actual well-wisher. Is my actual well-wisher. He has no other motive. He is not uh, driven by the desire for having some followers. He doesn't want followers for the sake of his prestige or for the sake of his sense gratification. 
He is free from all this business of sense enjoyment. He is pure. So therefore, surrender is possible only to the pure devotee. Not to another conditioned soul. No. Then somebody may say, I'll surrender to Prabhupada, but I cannot surrender to my spiritual authority because they're all conditioned souls. So Prabhupada, he has made the system that when he is not physically present, then his instructions are received through the proper channel of the spiritual authority system that he has established. Now, the, uh, the faith and the confidence for a devotee to follow the spiritual authority and take instructions and carry out those instructions is based on the understanding that the authority themselves are surrendered to Prabhupada and they are acting as per Prabhupada's instructions and directions in passing on the instructions very faithfully. This is the basis. So, those who are uh, trying to follow, in the beginning we can't expect 100% surrender or full uh, obedience, but in the training period at least, one can use one's discrimination and intelligence to see whether the spiritual authorities themselves are surrendered to Prabhupada. They themselves are following or not. Hmm? Just like Prabhupada instructed his disciples, bow down to Krishna. So they are seeing Prabhupada himself is bowing down to Krishna. Prabhupada is telling his disciples in the beginning days, chant Hare Krishna on beads. So Prabhupada himself is chanting on beads. Therefore, Acharya. He teaches by his personal example. So, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu instructs us uh, uh, that we have to teach by our personal example. We have to preach. If we have to become preachers, we ourselves have to follow. Janma sarthaka kari karo paropakar. If we have to do real welfare activity of preaching Krishna consciousness, then we have to perfect our own Krishna consciousness. That is required. We have to follow. So automatically when we follow and tell others to follow also, it becomes very easy. It's not difficult. So we have to set the example, we have to follow, we have to be sincere, we have to surrender to Prabhupada. So that uh, is necessary. In fact, there is disruption in this whole process when the leader is not surrendered, leader is not setting the proper example, leader himself is having so many uh, uh, conditions or conditional uh, uh, surrender, then it's not going to work. There's going to be so much uh, disruption, so much of faithlessness. So it is required, uh, Prabhupada says, that our best preaching is that we ourselves are strictly following and we are simply by our example, uh, we are doing the preaching. Uh, Prabhupada says in the temple, the devotee should be so nicely following. Anybody comes, just looks at the devotees, immediately they become devotee. Immediately they become devotee. So that is the power of following the authoritative Acharya, pure devotee spiritual master. He is perfect. Krishna is all perfect. 
even though we may not be perfect by following strictly and setting the good example we automatically preach nothing else is required nothing else is actually required afterwards we may also speak and say what is there in the scriptures or what we have been taught we can repeat that but even that is not so much important as our strictly following and setting the example demonstrating by following hmm? so prabhupa says here the best example here of brahma and manu manu and brahma both are qualified and manu is surrendering to brahma without any reservation now brahma himself is surrendered to krishna without reservation so he is ideal ideal he is ideal but even if he is ideal sometimes the misguided son or disciple will deviate will not follow so that is an unfortunate situation because the independence is there free will is there misuse of that independence means they will not surrender so surrender is required and surrender has to be properly uh, uh, the object of surrender has to be selected properly the pure devotee and the sincere followers of the pure devotee both are required not only the pure devotee but also the sincere followers of the pure devotee in their association in their uh, sangha uh, that we can actually properly uh, surrender to the guru and uh, by surrender to the guru we surrender to krishna and uh, make a life perfect i'll stop here gantara shrimad bhagavatam ki jay shri prabhupad ki